Hey everyone, this is Rocky from WeLearnChess.com, and I've got a pretty cool video for you here today. I uh, just played a, a fun game. Um, I actually missed the coolest move in the game, and that's why I decided to make the video to show that to you. The computer pointed out something out to me um, in the post-mortem analysis that would have been really fun to play. So uh, let's take a look here. This is a 15-10 game. As I mentioned in one of my earlier posts, I uh, got my new high blitz rating of 1700, so I'm going to enjoy that and let that ride for a while while uh, I get back to some longer time controls, which is better for my chess anyway, and probably I should do some more game analysis and studying and stuff too. Anyway, my opponent played, um, this has a funny name, it's called the Rat Defense, and uh, it doesn't score particularly well for black in master level play. I guess at our level you can do a lot of stuff at lower and intermediate levels. Um, but I, it just, um, probably the reason that it's not so great is that it doesn't directly challenge white's pawn presence in the center, and it's not like if you play some hyper-modern openings where, you know, um, black maybe puts one pawn here on the sixth rank and then immediately tries to fiend shadow a bishop and um, uses his knights and bishops to challenge the center a little bit later and try to chip away at it, um, like, uh, you know, with a Nimzo or something like that. Um, that's a little bit, that's a little, well, actually much better. But um, this opening does neither, at least in the beginning, where it's not challenging with pawns or pieces, so that's probably one of the big problems. Uh, so it gives uh, easier easier rain for white's pieces to come out of the attack. I wasn't playing the best moves here as as white either, so um, I'll have to study this uh, this opening and try to make better use out of my opening moves to slowly build up a, a slightly bigger advantage. Um, but luckily, when when you face people who play these system type openings, where they play the same sort of seven to twelve moves almost memorized in the opening, is that even if you don't play the best moves to really pressurize black from the beginning, um, a lot of times they won't play. The, they're not playing the best defense either. So uh, it kind of goes both ways. Where if you're not careful as white, you can actually let black end up with a decent position if you don't try to exploit the weaknesses of the you know the poor opening choice. Um, but it can also go the other way, where Black's playing memorized moves and steps into a problem or allows you more opportunities. So it's kind of what happened in this game. So he plays his memorized moves, and um, I was able to get a pawn on e5. And if you're a one e4 player as white, you know that having a pawn on e5 often opens up a lot of great attacking opportunities against Black's king because this knight's an important defender, especially of h7, but of some other squares too. And uh, once the knight moves, then you often have an opportunity for a classic sacrifice here. So I'm not going to go over the whole Greek gift sacrifice in detail because there's better videos on that than I could do. Uh, I know International Master Danny Ranch from Chess.com did a great video on this, so I'll put a link to that. Also, there's some videos on Chess Explain and some other, some other sites, so I'll put some links to those. Those are great. If you are not familiar with the Greek gifts, or if you are but it doesn't always work out for you, you should revisit some of those videos because... Um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's one of the first attacking ideas that a lot of people learn, and um, you know, if you like attacking chess, it's it's just fun. And there's actually so many variations; it's surprising how many resources black can end up with. Although, uh, you know, usually if white attacked precisely, if you're in a position where it works, then you're usually going to win the game. Having said that, there's like five or six criteria that have to be met for the successful sacrifice, and well, one of the first criteria is first criterion, sorry, is not having a knight on f6 because you're going to sacrifice your bishop on h7, which is the start of this Greek gift, and it's just a you know a lot of times the sacrifice comes up not just in the Greek gift but in other cases where you want to try to open up the h file and get some to tempting moves to bring in your pieces. Um, obviously, if the knight were still on f6, then you know if you took on h7, then the knight could just take. And then there's no follow-up check with the knight because the, the king's not on h7. So the Greek gift, if, if you're new to it, the Greek gift is bishop takes on h7. After king takes, then your knight comes into g5, so this square would have to be vacant. That's with check, and then the king moves somewhere, and then the queen has an open diagonal to come in and start creating some threats with the with the knight. So the knight and queen tana, which is very strong, creates a combination of mating threats and threats to win back more material than white's given up. So a lot of fun to look at. One of the other criterion is that Black can't have a uh, queen and bishop battery that's open here on this dark square. Usually, it's I almost never have this bishop on this square. Um, part of the reason I was able to get it here was because black played this really slow, passive opening. But you can imagine if my bishop was still back here on c1, and black has this queen-bishop battery open, and I played the bishop check, 
and I tried to, I'm imagining again that this square is open, and I tried to move my knight here. Well, he could just take it with the bishop, and then the attack fizzles out, and I've just sacrificed my bishop for nothing. So, um, knowing that, I made a small inaccuracy here of taking this bishop. I just wanted to get rid of that bishop so that um, I could free up the square for my knight, and so that this knight couldn't be taken or would have to be taken with the queen if he wanted to take it. Uh, and this is actually still a strong attack, but it's not as strong as it could have been. Um, the other point is that um, black doesn't actually have to take with the queen. Usually when the knight is blocking off the queen, that's really bad for black. But in this case, it allows for some really crazy defenses and long lines. And you can take a look with your computer program where, you know, after everything is said and done, sometimes this knight gets down here to f5. And after an exchange of pawns here, the queen comes down with check to d4 and then swings over to h4. And uh, the knight is protecting on h4 and forces a queen exchange. Um, now, in a lot of those lines, white is still better, where even if you know the piece material ends up the same, but like white's up a few pawns and has an attack still, even without queens. But um, it's just totally <laughs> insane line that I didn't consider. Um, so but that's one of the other criterion is that a queen can't be able to get back over here to the defense of the h file. And another criterion is that um, black can't have like a light square bishop or a queen that can get to this light square diagonal. So sometimes there's lines where after white's light square bishop is gone and the queen or the bishop comes around somewhere on this diagonal and is able to defend this sensitive square. So there's just a lot of crazy things that can happen and um, more reason to watch those Greek videos so you can get a sense of what some of those uh, criteria are. Okay, but anyway, my opponent didn't play the knight over and we didn't see some of those crazy lines, which neither one of us probably would have seen. And uh, so I kind of got away. And there's, there's actually some other points to the move order here too where... Um, usually it's a bad idea for black to just play the king over, and again, I'll point you to the other Greek gift videos for that, but it would have been uh, a little bit better for black had uh, um, had different piece configurations been on the board. Um, still not, black wouldn't have been better, but had some chances. Um, okay, anyway, let's just get to the game because I want to show you where <laughs> this uh, fun move was. <laughs> so if you haven't turned off this video already, um, here... Um, well, if black goes back, then you'll see in the Greek gift videos that this is really hard for for black to get out of to avoid mates. So usually the best move is to come forward here, and then after this queen setting up some discoveries, then f5 sometimes is a resource. And um, there's some there's some ways actually for black to try to survive. Although here I think it's pretty uh, pretty dire. But um, my opponent actually played a strange move. I actually hadn't seen this before. And so I was trying to think of what to do. And I think one of the reasons that I was thinking in the game that this might not be so good is that at least when the king is here on the G file, um, sometimes you can, you know, try to go in both directions, although there's not many escape squares. So I think his idea was to try to play G6 and put the, the king back here on G7, which actually isn't a bad idea. Um, okay, so in this position, uh, if black were to do nothing, I'm actually threatening a force to mate, so he... You know, he can't do something silly. He's got to address this idea. And he did see that. So um, he played rook h8. So just, you know, stopping this idea here, obviously. Of course, I could just take this rook. Uh, and then I'd be up in exchange at the very least, and I'd still have an attack. Um, but then something like this isn't uh, so great necessarily, because now I've got to drop my queen back. It's under attack. It's kind of this funny defense here with the knight on pre. Uh, and, you know, from here, I guess various things could happen. Probably, this is probably best first. Um, but yeah, so we'd have some, some different ideas. We're black still in a lot of trouble here, obviously, but, um, it's not as good as what was pointed out to me by the computer. So instead of playing this check, um, pause your video now if you want to treat this like a tactical exercise and see if you can find the best attacking, uh, move here for white. It's not easy to spot. It's a lot of fun. I wish I had seen it. Okay, so I'm going to give the solution now here pointed out by Stockfish, which is the amazing knight d5. Uh, just putting this knight on pre and, uh, you know, just asking black what he plans to do. The problem is that if the knight's taken, it's actually a force made in two, only square for the king. And now the mate is delivered with uh, this lowly pawn, which is always awesome when you get to mate with a pawn. Uh, and point being, of course, that this pawn can't be taken. 
by any piece or by this pawn because it's no longer on e6. So pretty cool uh, there if I had seen that. And well, okay, if black can't take the knight, it is attacking this queen. So, um, you know, maybe the queen wants to save herself. Well, in that case, there's still a mate. And even though my queen is under attack here, I can play this checkmate with the knight, which is pretty cool. All the escape squares are covered. Um, so that means that <laughs> black can't save his, his king and his queen at the same time. Uh, so he actually just has to leave the queen there. And then, well, if you were to play f5 here, uh, the problem here is that um, if I play this, I'm going to get this queen with check. And then when the queen, when the king moves, I can also grab this rook. So f5 is not good there in that situation, although f5 is often one of the only hopes for black in some of these Greek gift lines. So he would actually have to play... Um, g6, because now if I play this, this doesn't come with check, and it's not as good, but obviously I don't have to play that check. I can just take the queen. So um, really nothing here is working for black, and that's the reason that this is like a plus 12 position as opposed to what I played in the game. Um, I played, so again, after he prevented this mating idea, I just played my rook up, lifted it so that I could give check with the rook rather than with the queen. Uh, and it's here. I mean, he tried this g6 idea of trying to get the uh, the king out, but now um, it's just force mate, actually. So there's only one square here. And, um, you know, I'm not really sure what he can do. Probably the only way to probably directly avoid mate would be something like this. But uh, actually, maybe the king could even take here. But, I mean, just something like this, and then you know, okay, the the game goes on, but uh, it's obviously uh, pretty rough stuff here for, for Black. He does have a few pawns, but I've still got the attack, and it's unclear if he's going to be able to survive this. Probably not, uh, with the queen coming in and eventually getting over to f7 with, you know, check threats and gobbling up pawns and all sorts of stuff. So, uh, plus this bishop's is probably likely to be lost, too, on some kind of check on the back rank, so he's not really... He's down even more material than it looks at the moment. So uh, that was a cool uh, editing anyway, even what I had uh, in the game. But it would have been a lot cooler if I had found the knight c5 move. So I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, definitely encourage you to check out some of the other videos linked below. And uh, if you're an attacking chess player, have fun with your attacks.